Alright so folks, real quickly before we get off the rest of the video, I'm going to show you these custom wood presentation cases made by yours truly to display your black powder revolver. Each box comes complete with several compartments put in, several different accessories such as powder flasks, spare cylinders, captains, and whatever else you see fit to put in there. The interior of each box is felt lined to safely hold your revolver. I offer several different sizes of standard box which will fit your full length cap and ball revolver such as an 1850 Remington or 1851 Navy. A smaller box which will fit a Remington pocket revolver or a small pistol like that. A larger Colt Walker box which will fit a Colt Walker revolver. And an even larger box which will fit an 1851 Navy Buntline Special Revolver or an 1858 Buffalo Gun. To get one of your own, you can find them for sale on my eBay store, and I have that link down below in this video's description. Go check that out when you have the chance. Now, let's get on with the rest of the show. Hi there folks, you're watching the Black Powder Shooter 44 channel. Today I wanted to go over how you load one of these Colt 1873 replica cap and ball revolvers. Now, of course, these don't have a loading lever attached to them. I've had, um... We've got some comments before people saying, well, is the is there anything, you know, built on the gun that could load it, you think he uses a loading lever? And the answer is no. You have an ejector rod, but it, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. You know, like you could push it into the cylinder, but it's 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 not gonna do anything. And even if there was a, they had some kind of loading tool on that, you're not gonna get I'm not sure you have enough leverage to see a projectile in the cylinder that way just by pushing this down. So uh, the answer is no, you don't have a loading lever on this gun, but uh, we, so what you need is you need some kind of loading stand, and I got this one here, powder incorporated loading stand, uh, and it, it'll do the job. So what you gotta do is you gotta remove the cylinder every time you want to load it. So if you don't have one of these, if you're not sure what these are, this is a, uh, a Colt 1873 ba base pin uh, removal tool. and. This is very necessary if you have one of these guns. Uh, you're going to want to spend the 30 bucks or whatever these cost to get one because when you're dealing with black powder fouling on this basement, it gets really fouled up. And if you're trying to pull it out with your hand, it's not fun. So, you know, I definitely recommend getting one of these. So, what you got to do is just put your gun half cock, push the screw in, the push through there, take your tool. Try to fit it over it, and there we go. That one's getting a little stuck. What I might do is I might spray a little balsol oil on there, loosen it up a little bit, and you're gonna open your loading gate. Yeah, I know, right? Loading gate. So you're gonna load <laughs> on this cap and ball gun, which you. Well, I'll talk about that later a little bit. But you could use this loading gate to put the caps on once you have the cylinder on the gun, but. Open that loading gate, take the cylinder out, now you can, you can go about loading it. So you gotta load off the gun. And I'm just gonna do that real quickly on screen. So, let me get this zoomed in. So I'm gonna load off 25 grains of powder, of black powder. That's a max charge on this gun with black powder. If Pyrodex, maybe you, could get, you might be able to fit closer to 30 grains. And this is with a wad. But 25 grains I found is pretty much a max with a wad. So, I'm gonna get all six chambers charged. And there was a very slim chance of rain today, and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit, so hopefully that stops. That's five, we got one more, one more chamber. Okay, so the fifth chamber, or the sixth chamber is charged. I'm just gonna throw some wads on real quick. There are a bunch of these. Keep things loosened up when we're firing. I like to use these felt wads. And most of the time I use the Gattafoa number one lubricant recipe of paraffin beeswax and mutton tallow. And it works pretty good. Um, so let's push the wads down real quick. Let's 
take our projectile. These are 451 round balls. And we're gonna set them on the cylinder. Move that aside, we're not gonna need that anymore. And I was gonna put it on the loading stand. And I'm gonna seat each projectile. This is hard to do with this position. I try not to get in the way of the camera, but I think I am. Okay, so now the chambers are charged. Let me move the camera. Chambers are charged, and we got to cap it. So what you could do, and this wind's picking up. What you could do is you could cap it on the gun. You know, I know some of you. Uh, like to do that I find it more of a pain you know you have the safety precaution um, just don't you could put them on very lightly and see them later with a dowel or something that's what I'm doing I'm not pushing them on really pushing it home I'm just putting it on the nipple so it'll stay there you know I'm not exerting a lot of force to the percussion cap so I like Remington number 10. CCI number 10s, they just, they don't fit in this gun or most of my other guns really well either. These, I, I was shooting uh, recently a Remington carb, my Remington carbine, and also a 58 Remington, and the CCI number 10s just wouldn't fit my Buffalo Remington. So, pretty frustrating. 68 number 11s, if you, you give them a little pinch, they work, or if the gun's fouled up. So, that's capped up. I'm gonna stick the cylinder in the gun. Open your load again, stick the cylinder in the gun. And I got a little fouling on it. Put your base pin back in, push the screw. And you're gonna push your base pin in. And until it's, oops. That could happen, you could push it too far, and that's kind of annoying, but what you always have to do is, it's not optimal, but it's what you, what you gotta do. You gotta put the gun at full cock. Now, you can see that sticking through. This is pointing in a safe direction, by the way. I'm pointing right down range. You're going to have to push this button and lower the hammer so you can push the base pin back out a little bit. But uh, now it's all set to go. The only safety caution you get on a Colt single action army style gun is that right there. That, so it's not resting on the nipple. That's not the most safest thing, but that's just the design of the gun. So if you wanted to load six, that's what you got to do. So let's go shoot it really quick. Okay, so that'll do it for the video. This is how I go about loading one of these Colt 1873 replicas. This is this one's a Pieta. How you go how you go about loading one of these. So you're gonna need a loading stand to load this gun up, and that's about it. So thanks for watching folks. Until next time, have a great day.